Oh, it's moving without me. Uh, hi, I'm Ben Heckendorn. Uh, I work and live here in Madison, and I was asked to come to the show to talk about what we do, and uh, I'm associated with um, some of the videographers that are hosting the show, so hopefully this is somewhat technically related and doesn't bore you all to death. All right, so a uh, little background on myself. Um, I'm a lifelong uh, Wisconsin resident, and uh, you know, I used to be a graphic artist, actually, um, which isn't very technical, but you know. And I was into film and stuff right around, I don't know, 2000. And I decided that I wanted to try something new. I wanted to try electronics, which I've been interested in as a kid, but I guess I never really felt super encouraged to pursue it as a career. So I never really got into it until I was back into my 20s again. Uh, yeah, so what I did, this is long ago, is uh, I thought it'd be cool to do some electronics mods. And this is you know, before the whole maker movement, before YouTube and the internet really took off, so it was kind of a tougher world back then. But I thought it'd be cool to make like a portable Atari 2600 out of the original hardware. So this is something I did. I was able, you know, I was doing, you know, uh, CNC work and graphic design, so it wasn't too difficult to build something. But the electronics, I wasn't very good at. I completely hacked it together. It's quite a mess inside. Even if I look at it now, I'm fairly embarrassed to look at it. Um, but one thing I kind of thought would be a good, you know, aspect for this topic is talking about how the web has changed. Um, I guess I've been doing this sort of thing for about 15 years now, so I've definitely, you know, it's quite the journey. So uh, when I started, you know, there was, you know, there was the internet, and you, I think eBay and Amazon existed, but it was pretty primitive. This is around 2000, and granted, this is like, you know, five years after it really started to kick off, but it was like a completely alien world. And you know, you would have your Netscape Navigator. I, again, you know, not all of you might remember that. Uh, <laughs> You know, Netscape Navigator had some really cool things, not this particular version, but it was actually the first browser to introduce the tabs. Then Microsoft pretended like they invented it, but no, Netscape did it first. So it was really, it was really a nice browser back in the day. Anyway, back then, you would have to get your own website. There was no social media. There was no hosting. Well, you know what I mean, like shared hosting. And you just had to put the stuff out on the internet. And you know, again, you know, we didn't have maker fairs. We didn't have as many conferences, and I didn't, there was really, even though the internet existed, you know, it was like Yahoo chat rooms, you didn't know what was out there. You couldn't interact with people in real time. So I was amazed to find that people were interested, interested in this old retro gaming stuff. So I just made this terrible looking website. This is actually Rev2, it did look worse than this. But this was, <laughs> this was cutting edge, you remember when it was like, what did they call that, uh, skew, skewology when you use like wood? Thank you, yes, the old, the old Apple way they used to do it. Uh, yeah, oh, and then you had a hit counter? That was quite the thing, <laughs> right? Yeah, um, so, but the, the thing that I thought was very interesting is that you know, I was doing this stuff as a side project and people were incredibly interested in it and this was really the only way you could communicate with people was over the web and email. And I was like, holy cow, people love this stuff. So this is what I learned. Of course, this is completely irrelevant, but I thought it might be a fun trip down memory lane. This was leveraging Web 1.0. I mean, we were probably technically in Web 2.0 at that point, but whatever. So it was all about creating well-written, media-rich articles, more than 140 characters. Nowadays, I'm incredibly lazy. Like, I'm like, here's my photo on Twitter, you know, microblogging. I don't even really update my own website anymore. It looks like a ghost town, because it's really not that important as, as much as it used to be. I mean, you still need something. But back then, it was all about, you know, creating rich content and, you know, keeping people on your site. You know, again, uh, I don't know if WordPress existed, but as far as like an end user content management system around 2000, I, there's certainly nothing that I had access to. And then you had to host your own videos, which was insane. And so sort of like, oh my gosh, I have to make this really small. I have to make it short, otherwise people won't watch it. And it cuts away my bandwidth. And if I go over one gigabyte per month or whatever it would have been back then, after I upload it with my modem, it would, be, it would, um, it would wreck things. Here's some other fun stuff. This stuff is probably actually uh, somewhat still relevant. I always like to update on Tuesday evenings so it propagates on Wednesday because Wednesday is the laziest day at people's jobs, hump day. They're like, oh God, only halfway through the week. So they start reading articles and stuff. So I always thought that was the best time to release stuff. I mean, of course, nowadays, you know, we have a 24 seven news cycle and there's always stuff being up late, updated. But you know, for me, it was always Wednesdays. Um, yeah, and early on, gosh, I can't even remember what sites were around back then. Engadget certainly wasn't. But you know, you get noticed, what? Slash that, yes, I guess that, oh yeah, that's there. Um, if you can get noticed on some popular sites, then they'll continue to follow you. Again, a, uh, 
advanced concept back then. And then, yeah, that was a big thing, is like if you got slash dotted or digged or dug or whatever it would, I guess dig would have been, it would have been a little after that because that was after Kevin Rose left Tech TV. Still, I mean, it would just bring out down your whole site. Nowadays, everything's spread out over the you know social media and whatnot. But back then, it was like a bottleneck. The bottleneck was your site. And it went down every time. So it was good to have relationships with the service providers. And yeah, so basically, it was all about your own website. And this whole talk is just about websites. It's just you know, this is what I remember over the years. So after surviving the slash dottings and whatnot, I started writing a book for some reason. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, th there's a funny story behind that. I don't know if, I guess this, I don't have as good of you know, information as m many of your speakers, but uh, I think I was on Tech TV. Yes, I was on Tech TV, and that was like 10 versions of G4 ago. Now it's Esquire out of business, I don't even know. Um, but um, I made this nice video, I don't have it here, but it was this nice edited video showing the stuff that I would do, and I had you know, edits and um, we at Wiley Publishing, which is you know a publisher, pretty large publisher. They're like, hey, we really like the video in the video, and I was really thrilled because I'm like, oh, you know, I was like 25. This video I edited got aired on cable. Oh, it's so amazing. Um, they're like, well, we like that video. You should write a book about this. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I guess that was the one thing. You know, if you're if you're starting out, or if you're doing something on the side, or if you're you know new to business, the thing I've learned over the years is you never know what people want until you find out that they want it. That sounds kind of obvious. Well, <laughs> you can't go, you can't really create things. It's almost like things are created for you. It's like, oh, that is a desire. Look, look at the iPad, for instance. Nobody thought, nobody, who wanted that? People laughed about it being a giant iPod touch, but look what happened. You, you never really know until you just dive in head first. So uh, yeah, um, this is when I actually transitioned from like a boring, well, it wasn't that boring, but you know, like, oh, I hope I don't hit you with my laser pointer. I'll, I'll try not to. <laughs> anyway, this is when I transitioned from just doing a nine to five job to actually doing it full time. And this was insane. I wrote this book and designed all of these things in a kit form in like seven months. Nowadays, I'm sure it would take me like two years because I'm, I'm less efficient. I mean, yeah, I'm, oh God, you, just, you don't get more efficient as you get older. Um, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that awful? Like, if you think about how hard you have to work when you're, when you're younger, then as you get older, you're like, oh, who cares? I'm Ben Hick. I'll go as slow as I want. <laughs> <laughs> That's not exactly how it works, but sometimes. Because my friends are like, you got to take the summer off. And I'm like, OK, I took the summer off, but here's all the stuff I built. Now, now I'll get to work. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so I was always I thought, hey, OK, I'll write a book. Cause then I can say I wrote a book. I mean. There's not a whole lot of money in books if your name isn't Rolling or King, but it's still fun to do, you know, and you can always say it. And then you can put it on the shelf and be like, wow, I wrote that. Anyway, and now, you know, books, who has books? It's all on computer. But anyway, <laughs> so awful, right? Oh, the trees, too. Who th why, will no one think of the trees? Anyway, even though they regrow. So uh, I, never, I never got around to, uh, you know, getting back to working for, you know, the man, so to speak. I, I thought I would just, okay, I'll write this book, then I'll you know, just change careers or get another job. But I kept, people kept wanting projects, and I'm like, this is insane. There's so many people out on the internet, and again, this is when we're talking about you know, having the internet come to you. And that's really a great thing. You know, there's a lot of things that can uh, impede business. It's usually location, location, location. But the thing about the internet is the whole world can be your, your customers. It's not like, okay, you know, I have a hardware store in this little town. I have 1,200 people to sell my rakes to. You know, the internet really opens it up. And not just for mega companies like Amazon, but you know, for individuals too. So even if what you do is a niche, there's quite often enough people in the world to turn that niche into a career. So you know, it's, it never hurts to you know, just try stuff. You know, I, I do electronics, but you could make soap, or you could program, or create kitten mittens, really. Anything that, I, you could make a heck of a career with kitten mittens. They probably <laughs> exist. I'll go check, no, I'm not even gonna bother, I'm sure they exist. <laughs> Just like I thought, I thought, there's gotta be a USB, you know, stick with a lighter built into it, and I'm like, that has to exist, and it did, so. Everything already exists, so never bother inventing anything. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so, so around that time, uh, so this is like the mid-2000s, or the Audis, or whatever, whatever they call it. Um, yeah, I just started doing more and more stuff. I started getting into a point, as, I keep thinking I'm gonna hit you with this, I'm sorry. I mean, I have pretty good aim. My hands are pretty steady. See, I can go right around you. <laughs> anyway, 
Anyway, so I started getting into point of sale systems. This thing is like the model. It look, looks like something from like 2001. Uh, did point of sale, all sorts of really eclectic projects. This is this was fun. I love the Apple IIGS. That was one of my favorite old Apple computers. They made a cool portable version of that. Uh, and then I wor started working with uh, video game developers as well. You know, because I'd done a lot of gaming stuff. So again, you know, it might seem like kind of foolish, but it can lead to. I don't want to say real work, but you know, lead to getting new gigs with large companies. Uh, we do uh, testing latency. I think even Raven has one of these. Uh, yeah, so I just kind of started expanding over the years. I will get to the Ben Hex show stuff eventually. Oh, so this is interesting. Um, again, this goes back to you never know what people want until they tell you. I was just sitting around one day, probably watching Law and Order, and I got an email, and someone's like, hey, I got injured in uh, the Iraq war. And now I can't play video games. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right, because it's always designed for people with two hands. And there's more and more buttons every year. And uh, I was actually just talking to someone about this earlier today. A lot of people are like, oh, well, there's the Wii. I guess the Wii's kind of gone now. But you're know, like, ooh, you can do this. But a lot of people, you know, they want to play you know, their complex uh, PlayStation or Sony games. PlayStation or Sony, wow, you're welcome. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so, so I'm like, OK, that's an interesting challenge. I never thought about that. So we started. Looking into, well, by we, I mean me. I always talk in plural now, but back then it was just me. Um, started working on accessibility things, and I was like, okay, well, how can we help people game? And I worked with uh, Ben Sawyer from the Games uh, for Health Foundation out east, and we wanted to make a, a guitar hero for people. If they you know, weren't able to fully do the guitar, we could move some of the stuff out to the foot pedal. I did a uh, sip and puff uh, prototype that was kind of overly complicated, but it was fun, because it's like, it's like a fun challenge, and I can help people. Uh, yeah, and there's many iterations. This was actually a retail product. Uh, oh yeah, around this time I started getting into retail. It kind of looks like a giant hip flask, and I don't know if that was like subliminal or what, but you know, you know, hip flask is rounded, and this thing sat on your leg, and your legs are round. Boom, industrial design 101. Uh, but yes, yeah, so <laughs> it was all about it was all about you know evolving this stuff and getting into more of this accessibility. And again, I never really knew that market was out there. So I guess my the point is. People give, up, give me ideas, and then I build it. I don't really think of that much at all, to be honest. But whatever. That's how the world works. Um, yeah, so we were doing you know, point of sale systems, a lot of contract work, working, you know, helping game developers. Uh, I was really thrilled when I got a credit on, what was it, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. I'm like, oh, that's me. I was above the Navy SEALs, so yeah, watch out. Uh, anyway, so I was, I was doing a lot of stuff like that. Well, actually, I hope there's no SEALs in here, although I get my butt kicked. Anyway. <laughs> I get my neck snapped. Anyway, so I, I kind of diversified a lot of things. I really, I'd taken it from like one, you know, one simple project that I did in nights and weekends and turned it into a business. So in 2010, uh, an ad agency was like, hey, do you want to do a, uh, a web show? And I'm like, oh yeah, that's cool. Because, you know, I'd done, you know, this is back when I always take a YouTube video like, hey, I built this thing. Okay. Um, yeah, so they're like, yeah, that'd be really cool. We have a client, uh, which is Newark, which is an electronics company, and they'd like to, you know, have people embrace their community through a series of web videos that you could create. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm good at, like, talking and stuff and making silly jokes. Uh, yeah, so we started the Ben Heck Show, and uh, again, it's a local show that we do here in Madison. So now I get to talk about what I'm doing presently. So the premise of the Ben Heck Show, it kind of goes back to uh, what we were doing as far as you know, you know, you know, helping people or coming up with cool ideas for uh, you know non-obvious problems. Uh, it's, uh, it started as a bi-weekly web series centered around electronics culture, hosted by me, Dorn. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now everyone says Dorf. If they get it wrong, they say Dorf. It sounds like actually it was Heck and Thorn when I was a you know my Viking ancestors. Like, no. it's kind of, I kind of, <laughs> they were probably all like gingers just like me too, but they were tough. <laughs> anyway, uh, so. I guess when we started it, you know, we were like, okay, what's the show about? And uh, I was a big Mythbusters fan. What a, what a shock. Of course I was. But I'm like, wow, they spend a lot of money just blowing stuff up and throwing ping pong balls into the ocean. I was like, what if we tried to solve, you know, small real world problems, you know, like with the, you know, accessibility? And they're like, oh yeah, that's a good, a good premise. We also do a lot of episodes that are kind of more fluff or completely like the hot pocket dispenser that attaches your controller, things that don't solve any problems. I guess it solves a problem, but creates another. Uh, but it, the idea was, <laughs> yes, that was one of our most popular episodes, too. Uh, the, so my thought was, you know, I thought it was quite the innovation. You know, it was like, ooh, you can rip around the hot pocket. And they're like, we actually got this, I can tell you the backstory. We got this, um, they're like, hey, we want a food episode. And I'm like, oh, okay, food, let's see. And, blah, blah, blah. and I saw this t-shirt, I think it was on Think Geek. 
and it was a, a, a rendering of two controller halves with like a cafeteria tray in the middle, like built into it, like, ha ha, I'm a gamer. And I'm like, hmm. And then I thought, okay, wh what are the stereotypes? Gamers like Hot Pockets, blah, 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 they're lazy. So I thought it'd be cool to like plug something in and you don't even have to like hold it, and there's a ratchet, so you, you know, it ratchets up. Because you had to put it on the plate, and then people loved it. It was like people really liked the episode, and I, it's, it's insane. I need to go back and 3D print, or create a 3D print, printable version that I could put on Thingiverse, because I'm sure someone would, I don't know, cheesy, crappy food things are always really fun to me. Actually, when I f got my first 3D printer, the very first thing I printed was a uh, uh, <laughs> plastic lid to reseal spam. <laughs> It's on Thingiverse. It's called the Spam Saver Lid, and it's still there. And one edge of it is like kind of a triangle, so you can actually use it to slice the spam, you know, in a survival situation. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, again, you know, on paper, it would be like, who wants to see this hot pocket extruder? And I think we actually got that feedback, and you never know what people are going to like. <sighs> now we have the next, we can make the next gen version and like, you know, you know, sell it all over again. Anyway, it wasn't just about Hot Pockets. Uh, it was about you know, engaging the community and coming up with cool solutions using electronics and you know, inspiring people to get into electronics. We have a lot of kids who are like, hey, I, I want to you know, go to school for engineering because I watch your show. It's like, oh, that's awesome. Uh, OK, so it started out. I just filmed it where I, I, in my home. And I lived, used to live in Verona. Uh, single camera, yep, Verona, epic land. Single actor setup. So it's like, I'm here. You know, uh, you know well, it wasn't quite that bad. But I'm sure if I watched it now, I'd be like, oh, God. <laughs> uh, back then, we just did one episode every other week. And actually, our very first episode, uh, I think the show started in the fall, and some guy had been in an, uh, an accident. And he was like, I can't play. I love, I've been playing John Madden football for 20 years or however long. It's a long time. I can't play now. So our very first episode was actually making him a specialized foot controller so we could like throw the passes and whatnot. And again, you know, that was, was totally in my wheelhouse. So for a new show, uh, softball, or I guess it maybe that's not the right term for football, but an easier episode was appropriate. Um, then we did like automatic can crusher, um, folding laptop screen. That was a big thing. And these are the early shows. Like if you're on a plane, and of course, you know, there's no room now. And if you have a laptop, you can't open it fully because of the seat. So we made this thing where the, the screen was actually up here. And I think Dell actually has something like that now. But you know, it's fun to like say, I've always wanted to you know, try building that. And in a show format, I was able to explore those things that I might not necessarily have had the chance. Oh yeah, and the Halloween costume portal shirt, it was like a screen here with a camera here. So it's like, look like you had a portal from the video game, hole through your body. And now you just do it with two iPads and FaceTime, but. <laughs> <laughs> right? But in 2010, you know, two iPads would have completely destroyed our budget. Uh, <laughs> and we would have had to wait in line. OK, so the show's evolved over the years. Um, we expanded it. We actually added some, uh, you know, uh, hired some local people. Uh, there's, it's actually in a shop now. So now we have a break room and everything. And one thing with that kind of was tough, we were doing just two days a week, which is insane to think about now. But then we jumped up to pretty much full time. I still do side work, uh, but the show takes quite a bit of time because a lot of YouTube is just like, hey, I read this news story. Now I'm going to tell you how I feel about it. Blah, blah, blah. I hate this video game. Swear, swear, swear. And we actually do build things in real time on the show. And it's pretty tricky. So it takes up quite a bit of time. And sometimes, you know, it's like an iceberg. Like you, the stuff you see, this is my representation of an iceberg. The stuff you see. I'm, I'm filmed and all of this is what it took to make it. So I guess any, any productions like that. But as uh, our camera guy is actually in the audience, and as he could tell you, it's 5% uh, filming, 95% waiting around, which again is production 101. Anyway, uh, yeah, we added a full-time camera person from the UW uh, about four years ago. And then also a local uh, technical assistant added in season four. And uh, he is a current student at uh, MATC. So yeah, we usually always get local people. Uh, we started adding more complex projects because we had more production time, and then we had a technical assistant who could research ahead of time. Uh, yeah, we also do on the road episodes. We'll go to industry events, uh, Design West, Maker Fair, E3, SAS. There's probably other ones I can't think of. Uh, yeah, those are just the biggest ones I could think of, so I just did that. And then, of course, our episode length ballooned from 12 minute targets to as high as 25. And you know, I, I, li I like to watch YouTube a lot. And it's like, oh, if you take a 45 minute or one hour video, it's like, ugh. But 20 is pretty good. We try to make it decent. But usually we have you know, too much content, if not enough. So the current form of the show, oh, 
Oh, no, did I add an extra E in Felix, Felix's name? Oh, no, I hate when I do that. Anyway, so Felix Yardner is our research and technical assistant. He's always the guy in camera going, oh, yeah. Uh, Backflip Films is, <laughs> yeah. That's our, that's our catchphrase at the shop is, oh, yeah. It's not related to the Kool-Aid man. OK, I guess I'll tell you the story. We were taking, <laughs> we were taking a, uh, we have, well, we don't do as much as we did, but we have semi-mandatory pinball breaks every afternoon. And we were playing pinball. And uh, when Allison was on the show, for some reason, she got excited about it. She scored a point or something. She's like, oh, yeah. And I'm like, you sound like a trucker who just got to the rest stop. And she's like, <laughs> so anyway, then we just kept saying it for years and years. That's the story. I don't know why she was so excited. She was like, yeah. OK. So um, that's Backlit Films. Back, back, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Backlit Films is uh, the people that uh, do the local production. So we have a local uh, camera person slash producer on site at all times, you know, putting up with my nonsense. And then they do the assembly editing. And then Element 14, who is our sponsor, they're down in Chicago. They do the production editing and distribution. In the olden days, we were on Revision 3, but now we just kind of self distribute on uh, self distribute. OK, that's correct. On um, YouTube and whatnot. So uh, yeah, the show, uh, we want to drive people to Element 14, which is the electronics community. But you can also go on YouTube and watch it. Uh, we're closing in on half a million subscribers. So we're almost as good as a cat video. And <laughs> uh, we have 26.5 million views to date. And uh, again, uh, the, the, um, a lot of that is the Hot Pocket episode. <laughs> uh, OK, so I don't want to go too long here, but I went on my server and I found whichever photos were the easiest to locate. So uh, I just want to show you some examples of what we do. Um, so this mess on the left, it looks like something from, my, uh, from Brazil, the movie, not the country. Uh, but this is, uh, oh yeah, this is a, a site if you, if, a hat if you're not sighted. And it actually uses ultrasonic and it will, I took the little rumber motors off of game controllers or something, so it actually tell you the proximity, like and it was fun. So we, we would put it on, blindfold ourselves, and then see who could navigate the shop the best using the feedback from it. Uh, yeah, that's a pretty simple project to do. So we do something like that. We're like, hey, it's like, here's kind of how you do it. You don't have to exactly copy us, although you can get the files online. But if you know someone who might need something like this, or you wanted to try it yourself, you can. This, there's no contrast in this photo. But this is a, OK, I'll, I'll draw the contrast. This is a cylinder with a disk on top. And this was an automated shop camera. So people could log into Ustream or something, I believe it was. And they could actually tell the camera to look around and see what was going on in the shop. But then the uh, Ustream fees were too high, laughably so. I shouldn't. Yeah, there's no Ustream executives here, laughably high. Um, this thing over here, uh, people love video game stuff. So this is actually an Xbox One humongous tablet. If you look back here, oh, it's like a bone microphone there. This is actually, uh, we kind of did the uh, tablet thing where you can take the cover and put it around the back. So yeah, that was fun. We took that to a couple shows. It weighed a lot, though. You can't shrink down modern stuff too much. Uh, let's see here. Oh, OK. Uh, then we, you know, we work with suppliers. So we were talking to Freescale Semiconductor down in Austin. They're like, hey, come down to our excuse me, technology forum. And you, you should build something using this particular part that we have. And we're like, OK, what are we going to build? And I'm like, hey, let's build a miniature pinball machine. So I guess, oh, there's nothing in the photo for scale. That was, that was poor. This thing is like, uh, I don't know, 12 inches. It's approximately 45% scale of a normal pinball machine. The ball is like half an inch. And we used a tungsten ball so it would have more weight for its size. Uh, yeah, so that was pretty fun. Um, this was something, we just did this with uh, John's Arcade, who's another YouTuber. And he was like, hey, you're coming down to Atlanta for some sort of game convention? And I'm like, yes, I will be there to drink all your beer. And he's like, we should do something for a guy who wants to play arcade games and has an impairment. And I'm like, oh, cool. So um, this is the only photo I have. It's not fully formed, unfortunately, and I have a cut in it. But uh, these were actually some uh, solenoid actuators that will help you play an arcade game. They'll actually push the button. These dials are a, a force adjustment, and this is the um, this is where the joystick would go, and we built something right here. But I couldn't find a photo of it, so this is what I'll have. And then uh, we do a lot of things with the Raspberry Pi, because Element 14 is one of their uh, major uh, distributors. So we made a little Raspberry Pi portable unit. 
with some nice, you know, we use the red filament, which we never, well, we, I guess we use it. I always print in like black and white and gray. It's kind of boring. Well, I think it's okay, but some people don't like it. All right, so here's some more projects we did. Oh, more accessibility. Man, we do a lot of this. This was to help, this is for accessibility pinball. You s suction cup this onto a pinball machine and it will push one of the buttons for you if you're unable to uh, push it because I do a lot of stuff with pinball. And it's like a hobby of mine. And uh, if you're in a wheelchair, you might not be able to play pinball. If you, you know, if you don't, if you can't, you know, move your arms or have finger articulation, you might not be able to play. So there's a lot of things that can prevent people from, you know, doing things a lot of us take for granted. This is, I think we just did this last week. Oh, that contrast is terrible. That's a little oscilloscope watch that we built. That's pretty cool. And it's also a multimeter. So you, oh, and then the, the prongs go on your fingers so you look like Freddy Krueger, like this. But it's cool, you, so you, you clip on the ground and then you're like Yeah, so that's pretty fun. <laughs> and I, I always see these uh, homemade watches that are like five meters thick. And I'm like, I don't like that. So we actually hid the battery back in the band back there. So we spread it out a little bit. And then we actually did this on a uh, SLA uh, resin printer. This is me trying to look like an important movie director, but not, not convincingly, because I've got this cheesy sweater. Uh, oh, th this was kind of a YouTube idea. This is a camera. This camera has a vision camera. Vision camera, so dumb. It's got a, a computer vision camera on it that actually tracks objects. So if you're a lone YouTuber, that camera can follow you around. Like, oh, now I'm over here, now I'm over here. And it, uh, you can probably see it's got a belt, so it can track left and right, and it can also uh, uh, pan. I'm sorry, tilt. Pans and tilts. I should know that. <laughs> okay, a couple more photos here. Oh, yeah, this thing. I built this. Someone, someone contacted me about this, but, uh, yeah, they were kind of difficult to work with, so I was like, you know what? Let's just cancel this project. So I ended up with, like, this miniature, uh, I think this was a Raspberry Pi that a musician wanted. Uh, I think I ended up selling it for like scrap value. No, not really. But uh, yeah, that's fun to make. Oh, this is ridiculous. I just came across this and I, it kind of gave me, you know, shivers. I was like, you know, these printers with dual heads, like why can't they print two objects at once? And I'm like, I'm going to make a giant 3D printer that prints the two objects at once because these things are attached to the same carriage. That was a very time consuming project. But it did work and, and I was completely happy to get rid of it afterwards. <laughs> Yeah, because I don't, I don't know how you all feel about projects, but once you're done, I was like, nope, never want to see it again. Don't care, out of sight, out of mind. Uh, okay, yeah, that is all the beautiful photos. This slide doesn't look as good as that one, so we'll go back to that. Um, yeah, so I guess, uh, what else can I tell you about what I do in the Ben Heck show? Hmm, not much, so there's a guy raising his hand, so I guess we're doing questions. What are you programming in the Um. Oh, gosh. We use Arduinos a lot because they're cheap and easy. Um, personally, I usually use C++. Um, there are some things, not usually on the show, but I also use assembly sometimes if I want to get a lot of speed out of a microcontroller. Huh. Anyone else? Yes? Favorite pinball game? My favorite pinball game? Oh, gosh. Um, just because it annoys my coworkers, I really like my ratty old space shuttle game. It's like 30 years old and looks like it fell off the back of a truck, but I love it. Plus, it has space shuttles all over it. <laughs> huh. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Ah, uh, yes, yes. I actually had a slide in here that I took out because I didn't have time to complete it. You know, that's, that's, a, that's a coding thing, right? Uh, and, and the premise of that was, yeah, when your hobby becomes your job, it makes your life a blurry mess. Or It's very strange. So yeah, um, what I'll usually do is, you know, we do the projects on the show, and then if I want to do hobby stuff, uh, that's actually how I got into pinball. And we actually, I actually work with a company that's manufacturing pinball machines currently, and in Wisconsin, so yay economy. Uh, but uh, that's what I did on the side, which is an insanely ridiculous side project. It's, that's, my, that's the thing I do. Like, the stuff I do in the show is usually not as difficult as the stuff I choose to do as a hobby. Uh, yeah, I'm also I'm into like using my Wacom tablet or Wacom. Or, I know, is it Wacom or Wacom? What's the consensus? Wacom? Man, there's like uh, the tablet thing. Okay, okay, we'll just call it the tablet thing. 
I've been, I've been getting into that a lot too. And uh, we're continuing to, uh, we got a game in production and I guess so, yeah, besides the show, I guess my hobby activity right now is we're working on a pinball machine based off uh, Rob Zombie. So that's what I'm doing right now. Okay, yeah, so yeah, next year there'll be a Rob Zombie based pinball machine. Yeah, yeah. And we're working on a horror movie, which has nothing to do with like <laughs> technology, but <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, do we have time for a few more or are we good? Little short well, or long? Long. Oh, okay. Well, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.